Hello guys. Uh, my name is Jared Manduka, a lead software engineer uh, from Landsoft Bellotech Solutions. We are a company that deals in software solutions. We have a range of software uh, already in the market, including our very own uh, SACO and uh, School ERP. Our School ERP is already existing in more than uh, 40 uh, primary and uh, secondary schools in Kenya. Uh, having existed uh, in the last two years. So today I would like us to see the demo for a point of sale software, which is an application that will help you at the point of uh, at the supermarket, or maybe a do a shop, uh, a chemistry, or uh, a, f a f pharmacy shop, or another place when uh, when you may require inventory and receipts. Remember, we'll be doing inventory from start to the end, tracking an item from start to the end, and even uh, analyzing the profits as we give receipts to the uh, customers. So the most amazing feature of uh, in our software is that uh, you sometimes you might need to send a soft copy email receipt to the customer, which is just a prompt away. Just enter the email address of the customer, and then they'll get a soft copy uh, receipt in their email. Uh, the, the good thing about the receipts, you can always print as many times as you wish and as it, need, it is needed. So uh, today we, we're going to do the first part of the sales register because the, 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 the software has uh, six sec sections which I'll be doing in the coming videos. So work with me as I take you through the system. Thank you. So uh, like another system, uh, our point of sale, which is called Topos, uh, will start uh, a user by requesting the credentials, which will be the username and password. So uh, uh, the username, uh, I'll enter the username and then uh, uh, do the password. I want to do a wrong password, which I know uh, so that uh, we can check the message. So if you do a password or a, a, a wrong username, then uh, you'll get uh, this message coming up uh, down here. You can read. So uh, if you don't enter any of these and you try to log in, then uh, you can get the username. You have to fill the username. That's all. Let me fill the username. So if I leave the password blank, then the same. I am prompted to enter the uh, password. Then it has to be correct. So this time around, I'm doing a correct password. So that detects me to the next step. So with login, you can press the key login or the way you can do the, the, the enter key. Both keys will be, the, both options will be able to work. So in my case, I'll do enter key, then uh, takes me to the uh, homepage. So this is the homepage, as you can see, it has the, 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 the core menus. As I am logged in as admin, I'll be able to see all the, the, the uh, menus are active. So on top here, we have the name of the software. Then we are logged in as the admin, as you can see. So I have all the controls. Then this is the date of, uh, of login, which is uh, 28th of December, 2020, and the time is counting. So in my case now, I have, um, we, have uh, we have around, uh, uh, nine menus uh, where you can select to start with. But in a case where you logged in as a, just a cashier at the point of sale, then you'll be able to only see the sales register and maybe log out buttons being active. The others will be disabled. So in my case, as admin, then everything is active and I can be able to go through uh, through the menu. So uh, I'll start with, uh, with, with um, um, uh, uh, settings whereby if I click on settings, this is a menu which is presented to me. As an admin, uh, there are security features and key uh, functionalities of the system that must be locked unless otherwise, because anybody can get into the system and maybe try to change a few things here and there without the consent of the admin. So that's why now we have to go ahead and implement some key functionalities and uh, security features, which will help us to be able to account for every uh, attempt to log in. So if, as you can see now, if I have to unlock the admin settings, then uh, I'm prompted to request for a mail code, which is basically the default, the settings which have been put in place by the admin, 
so it will send a request through an email to the admin or the email that has been registered uh, for the system so in this case if you do have access to that particular email then you'll not be able to uh, go proceed because if i request let me request click on request uh you it will take me now it has been sent if it has been sent successfully then this is the next uh, uh, particular interface whereby you need to enter that code that has been sent to you so uh, let me see because i have access to that particular mail uh so that uh, so if we, i try to end a wrong code which is maybe one two three four five six seven I try to ask for access then this is what is pre presented to me that uh, uh, please enter the correct code here meaning that uh, what i've entered is very uh, uh, maybe incorrect that's why it's prompting me to enter the right code so in that case now you'll not be able to access the uh, domain settings until you have the right code i'm trying to open that uh, to to check my mail to see what i have uh in the meanwhile i go uh because now uh mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well guys we are back and uh, uh i'm requested i've been able to, re to retrieve my my code which is here so uh once i receive this code i can copy it or just read this because it's a small number so if i copy it uh let me copy it yeah then i go back to my system and paste the code here which is for my email then with this i should be granted access to the admin panel then click grant access so whew, that's it uh this is what we have uh these are the default uh, uh business profile settings so as you can see here we are required to enter the details as described by this particular section so we, what we are capturing here is business name, the tagline, postal address, contact, uh, company email, and uh, the password for this, because you'll need to authorize sending of uh, uh, maybe receipts uh, when the client requests for that, and also communication through mails. Then we have the store, uh, the, the store name here. So with this now, you should be able to customize your business accordingly, because I think these are the key, uh, the just the key, things and any business you have and then on the right hand side we have the logo whereby you need to browse for the particular logo and then uh, upload it here so this logo is very once you click here then you should be able to load a new image and uh, upload it there so this is what we have so in my case i don't want to upload any uh, any, any image because this is my logo and this is our logo and then uh, we we lose that in the meanwhile then once you click update company profile then the settings will be according to your business settings so this is a, a preview of the settings which is very key as we walk through the the uh the, the system so that uh, we see this is the backbone of everything so with that in mind then let's go back to the main menu by clicking here this menu will always stay there for you to easily navigate from and uh, back and forth uh, as it is you do so let me click here which takes me to the main menu so our main menu uh, remains intact with sales register employee setting then we have the stock list we have the customers we have the logout option we have the move stock reports and then return item so these are the key uh, uh, menus we have for the system which where each has its own very special function uh, different from the others so in our case, I will take you to the sales register. So this is where the cashier needs to uh, be navigating because uh, uh, the two the, the, it is very key for selling. When uh, a walk-in customer picks uh, an item or you sell to the to them, then you should be able to use the the sales register option uh, to maybe make a sale. So let me click on sales register. So. Uh, this is what is presented to you once you click on that particular sales register it is handled by the cashier the cashier maybe has no uh sometimes you control them from maybe we, we they don't input items or maybe if it's admin who does that then uh well and good you can serve the same purpose as admin so uh depending on the setup of the uh, company 
So in our case now, we are doing, uh, when a cashier logs in and accesses this particular tab, they will be able to do uh, search an item as it is. So, so uh, once you search an item and you click any of these, then you are presented with uh, the item listing. Our search is very, very active and very precise when it comes to searching an item. As long as any of them matches that, then you'll be able to retrieve the item based on a, a description of the item or the item code. So in my case, let me do a space key, which is just a blank key. So with that, uh, we, it just loads maybe all of them by just the click of a space bar, and then you, you delete again. So this side brings all the items. I in, apparently have to, which are not below quantity. Uh, if an item is zero, then it doesn't appear here. Yeah, the, if the quantity of the item is zero, which is uh, the inventory, it's, it's zero, then uh, it doesn't appear here. Yeah. So in our case, we have 70 for this particular nails and uh, 35 for hardwood. I want to take you through this. So if we take uh, maybe the nails and uh, click the first item, if it, it is the one, then you are told the available quantity is this. So just enter what you're selling. If uh, the customer has picked like 20 items, then it auto calculates, which, uh, which means that uh, it does the summation and computations which are necessary for the same. So on the right hand side, we have the item selection. In the middle, we have the, the, the buttons which uh, help you to add to the card, remove the card, and even commit the transaction. Then on the right hand side, we have the uh, the card now. This which this uh, uh, the uh, the card that holds uh, the items which are ready for committing but for this particular transaction. So in my case now, once I select trend items for nails, then I add to the card, then it moves here. So if maybe that's not the case, I can be able to remove it from the cart by selecting it and clicking on remove the item, then it leaves the item. Then let's do such again, uh, the same item nails, and then we do commit 25 this time around, and then the amount changes. So one, when we're doing that, remember down here, we have uh, we have uh, to calculate the total and maybe the, uh, the amount given by, uh, by the customer, which will give us the change here. So let's do one single transaction so that we see what happens. So once I had this record, then this amount automatically comes here, 1350. So in a case where I want to add another item, which is by, maybe I'll add, add wood, which is by clicking here, but then I'll do maybe 10 items, which should give me 3000. So once I add it to the card, this amount is automatically incremented uh, because it has to be very computational. So add to the card, then this amount changes for 375. In that case now, it means if my customer picks these two items, then he'll have to pay for 375. So let me assume that uh, my, I, my client uh, gives me uh, 5,000 is the amount which is given uh, so that now I can give a change. So once I enter the 5,000 given by the customer and uh, do, uh, do the summation, then uh, the system automatically computes the difference, which gives me 625 the change to the customer. So this means now uh, we are ready to commit this particular transaction because it is ready now. So uh, in that case now, we have an option here. Sometimes we might need to send this email to the customer. So by clicking, by checking this send email to the to send receipt to email, to email, then now I do commit this particular uh, mm -hmm. transaction, which means now saving like it's a complete transaction. Then it tells me that the transaction has been committed successful, that successfully, and then the items come here. So it is the first item as you can see here. It is always the top. The recent one is always the top. That's the, the case. But you can always change if you want to. Because these these items are very, we are our controls are very uh, easy to change. You can click on any of them. Once you click on it, then it will be able to do the necessary uh, sorting and uh, rearrangement of the items. So in that case now, then everything has changed because I'm trying to to do any of the amount. So if you want to change by change by descending, you want to do the date by descending, then it love you 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 get it. At the same time now, as you can see now, we, our recent transaction is this. So it has brought us uh, the recent transaction being at the top here with two items. 
So now, uh -huh. that's already committed. So the next step will be you want to print the receipt. So in this case now, I will want to preview a receipt uh, to show because I don't have a printer here. Then uh, I'll show you uh, how the mail is sent to the uh, customer. So if I check, send the mail to the email, to email of the customer, then if I do print receipt, I'm prompted to enter the email of the customer, which is here. So once I enter the email of the customer, which is my email, maybe for this particular testing, at gmail.com, this receipt will go to the to the client as it is. So if I send receipt, then it goes to the client, and at the same time, it will generate um, to generate for me uh, that particular receipt. So here we go. It has been generated. Just a click. You can opt to send it to the to the printer, but in my case, I want us to preview the the, the receipt. The receipt is very, very uh, straightforward and uh, very professional done. Now, let's analyze the receipt one by one. Mm -hmm. It's a very small page, as you can print it anywhere and uh, in any particular document. So, uh, pa paper, paper layout, but uh, in most cases, POS is work on, uh, work on a paper that is uh, endless. So you understand uh, the paper for receipts. So in this case now, this is a, a company information whereby you have the logo, we have information for the company and uh, the, another logo, I've just balanced the interface. Then now this is where the receipt starts. The register, this is auto-generated by the system for you to track in a case where you want to track a receipt all the way to the end. Cash sale, this is a receipt number now for this particular uh, receipt. Then the date, as you can see, this is the date and the time of the of printing this. The store, remember our settings in the system? We, the store reads Moy Avenue. So uh, these are the basic uh, system requirements where a receipt should be able to be very valid. So down here we have the item, quantity, price, and the amount. We sold two items, uh, two main items, but the quantity varies. So in my case, this was a uh, reference number for the item, and this is a description of the item. Then we saw 25 each at 55, this amount for the same. Then uh, the next item, well, this was a reference, and then we the, the description is add mahogany, mahogany wood, uh, 10 pieces each going at 300, it gives us 3,000. So in our case, the total is 4,375 bob. And the cash that was given uh, by the customer was 5,000. So in that case, we gave a change of 625 bob. All right, then down here, we have the item count for this particular receipt. So these were two items, main items. Taxable generate 14% of uh, 4,375 gives us that 762. Then the tax is 612. The cash given was 5,000. We have a disclaimer here down. We have the prices inc are inclusive of any VAT where possible. And then who served you was Mwanduka, then the date of serving, and then the receipt ends there. So that's a very simple receipt, but very straightforward. Uh, you do have, you, you do struggle to get this, but the format is like another standard uh, uh, receipt that a system should generate. So that's it for the, for the receipt. So I'll minimize this and go back to the system. So in that case, I send an email to the system. I send an email to the to the customer. Let me retrieve that particular email, which is here. So let me open my email. So as you can see, I have this. All right, now this is my email. It says this is a, uh, the title for the mail. And then here we are. Thank you for shopping with us. Please find attached your shopping receipt. Lands of Value Tech Solution, PO Box, and all that. Then the email. So this is the attachment. It already it has already attached this particular uh, receipt into the into the mail. So if I preview it in my email, then I get the same copy which we have already seen. It is exactly the same copy, and uh, with the same details. So this is very easy, it sends an email to the customer if they want a soft copy of the same. And also it saves you from maybe printing unnecessarily, because most of the receipts will just go to the waste. But with an email then you'll be able to save on cost of paper and all that. So uh, that's it uh, for, ET, for, for the receipt. So let me go back to 
our system, this is a system. So uh, basically, uh, the next step will be analyzing. So at the end of the day, cashier would want to see how many items have I sold, how much have I sold, and uh, which items are flowing, uh, are going fast. That kind of analysis is very key when it comes to uh, point of sales. So in my case, I'll click the next tab, which is cash sales analysis. And then I'm prompted to enter this. Uh, such an item. Maybe I'll want to search all the items that have been that, that have been sold over a range of time. So 2020. So so I sell all these items. So by just clicking uh, on the item, uh, because I'm searching by timestamp, which starts with 2020. The pattern is 2020 dash, all the way to the min min minutes. So 2020 alone has given me uh, uh, this amount, which is 339,095. This is the total cash sale, then the taxable, all that, that computation, the items. Then on the right hand side, I have the analysis for the same. This is a breakdown in, in a very graphical presentation of the same. It gives me this. Then down here, we have the item that has sold most and the item that has least sold. In our case now, we have the item selling most with 16 is hardwood. Then the, the least selling item is the nails, which has only three entries. So as I narrow down here, these these charts are very dynamic. If I do uh, the month, which is December, then I do date. This now will bring the real change, which if I do 26, then you can see. I saw 71,127 as a cash total sale. You can see here. So the, the same is analyzed here. So in, in that case, it was six, right? Then we have the total also changing here. So if I do 28, which is today, then I should get a very different figure, as you can see here. So these are totally different. I These are different uh, still. So as you can see here, the, 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 these uh, items are very, these computations are changing and the pie chart is changing accordingly. So in that case now, the 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 cashier will be able to analyze uh, what they have been they have been selling over a week, daily sales, weekly sales, monthly sales, and even annual sales or quarter quarterly sales. So that's very basic and very crucial when it comes to point of sales. So thank you so much for maybe working listening to this particular. Uh, uh, walkthrough of the our top post system and uh, I promise that uh, next time I'll be taking you through the next item which is uh, which is a uh, stock list now in that, in that case now prepare to see how you can stock in an item how can you be able to track an item from start to the end because this is very key when it comes to uh, controlling and managing uh, the items in the store so in that case now, I'll leave it to the next tutorial. Thank you so much for joining me today and working and listening to me. Thank you.